Parental discretion is advised. This week on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, we talk to Brian Papa of the Ringmaster Project. Uh, we talk about Jeff Jarrett, and we talk a lot, a lot, about Jake the Snake Roberts for the best possible reasons. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. It's the 8th anniversary show, uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show 401. Of course, we had the big blowout uh, there for the Christmas episode, the big theater episode uh, there for 400. So go check that out. Big time celebration. And, and again, thanks again to uh, uh, Bobby F. J. Town and the man here with me, uh, Papa Lunchbox, uh, as well. Whoop, maybe he's there. Hi. Are you there? Hey there, buddy. Hi, everybody. Why is the video not going through? Can you hear? I can, can you hear, hear me? You. Go What's ahead. Go ahead. I just see Mad Mike's head for some reason. So go ahead. Hey, everybody. What's going on, Pop Lunchbox? Back 2014. I have been uh, masturbating furiously in preparation furiously. Uh, for this very show. It is. Uh, it's been grueling. There's been chafing, but I did it for you, and I'm glad to be back. Excellent. And also with us is the mad one himself, Mad Mike from the Bronx, New York. Sir, how are you doing? I also tried masturbating furiously, but brawling buddies are not conducive for such actions. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> um, excellent. <laughs> Again, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can drop us a line to that good old email at... Good times! Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, 412-206-WMS0, or drop us a line. All right, we're over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Drop us a line on iTunes, or I'm sorry, subscribe. Mixing it up. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, uh, and we're going to try to get signed up with Spreaker and SoundCloud. So let us know if, uh, if you dig on that, and uh, we're just kind of experimenting that. So uh, look for that here in the next couple of weeks. I signed it up, but I kind of screwed it up and tried importing everything and kind of got weird. So... So, so look for an announcement on that. Uh, so with that, let's start the show the only way we know how uh, with the uh, fan mail. A little light tonight. I think you guys are still in the vacation mode. Uh, so uh, uh, first, uh, we got this one from Dustin here, guys. Dear Mayhem... 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 Oh, dear May Mayhem Globins. It's a health thing, I see. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the future world known as 2014. Here you will find things so vastly different from the world you travel from. Take, for instance, Jake the Snake is a character who was featured in the closing section of Raw, whereas in your time of 2013, he was simply an ex-drug addict doing yoga. Uh, we have, we also have this thing known as the as an entertaining Ryback, which is a great improvement from the version that was outshined by even Curtis Axel when it came to chemistry uh, of his... Uh, of his during your time. Of course, not everything has changed for the better as uh, the returning, um, as the returning a bare knuckle brawler now known, now has been reduced to a gimmick uh, that was amusing on a web series. That's way Barrett. But for some reason, they decided to put him on the main show. This I thought he had a bed and breakfast now. I know, right? This, this future world of yours for the taking, and while it might be a strange at first, I know that uh, you all will take time to let it grow on you before just trashing it, like the kids on YouTube comment sections who aren't smart enough to just quite, quite get the jokes. Questions. Excuse me. Uh, number one, Jeff Jarrett is keeping quiet on his resigning from TNA, but promises a shocking announcement in the near future. Of the three options, which is a situation you would personally choose and why? A... Number A, Jeff has a backer and resigned to prevent conflict of interest before actually purchasing the majority stake back in TNA from Panda Energy. B, Jared and his backers have decided to purchase an indie fed Evolve for the sake of argument and are in nego negotiations for a TV deal. Keeps bringing back Takara. Um, and number C, uh, Jared has decided to retire from wrestling uh, and in turn has taken an ironic 
turn by becoming Togeki's number one roadie. What do you think, Mike? Can I choose the option D? He comes out in the Royal Rumble and gets eliminated by Heath Slater. Acceptable. Acceptable. What about you, Elvin? <laughs> I'm confused. It's a multiple choice question, Elvin. It Elby. is a multiple choice question. There's, there's a lot of. There's a lot of. I don't understand. Okay. Basically, uh, do, do you want Jared? Do you want Jared to be a roadie? Do you want him to buy an indie fed, or do you want him to take back TNA? I don't know. I want him. I want him to come back to the WWE and job. Okay, job. so we have the same okay. answer. Yay! Okay, that yeah. works. That works. Um, and I, you know, I, I don't care. Just don't do anything for a while. There, Jerry. I, I, th I think he's keeping quiet about it because he doesn't have anything lined up. He's just done. I think I agree with you. I think I definitely agree with you on that one. Um, right. Uh, number two, please, oh, please, can you explain to me why in the ever-living fuck should I want to see Lesnar versus Big Show feud? Once upon a time, they broke they're the ring. Because they both big guys. Once upon oh, my God, 2002. Up a once, a once upon a time, they broke the ring. Now they are breaking my spirit by teasing that this is what they are going to do before giving Brock Lesnar a title shot. Uh, I kind of, we Mike, we had a talk about this last night. Oh, we did. <laughs> we, we did. We did. Uh, you know, I, I read an article today. If they were using Mark Henry to get to a Lesnar Big Show feud, mm -hmm. why couldn't they have reversed him? Mm -hmm. Like, have Lesnar assault Big Show. And then that brings out Mark Henry. And actually have Lesnar and Mark Henry feud than Lesnar Big Show. I'd rather see a Lesnar and Mark Henry feud. Okay. Uh, I, and, and, and like I, I said last night, really, you, you know this is... They need somebody to kind of job out to, to make Lesnar look good, right? He's got to win some match Yeah. now that he's back. So, well, I, I don't disagree with that, but... I'd rather hit something fresh. Like, Mark Henry can get beat up by Brock Lesnar, and it's not really going to do a whole lot for Mark Henry, but it'll be really, really fun to watch. Mm -hmm. Like, Lesnar Big Show, we've seen that. We've even seen Lesnar Big Show with Heyman in Lesnar's corner. Exactly. Um, sorry, I'm just fixing something on this side. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that. Um, I, I don't know. We'll we'll see. Uh, um, I'm sorry. There's a technical thing I'm dealing with here, and I have nothing to follow up on with you guys. Oh, I was sorry. hoping you were going to talk a little longer. <laughs> I maybe we'll do something different. You know, let's let's. It's a new year. Let's be hopeful that uh, we'll see something new and interesting, and and all of this stuff. You know, I I was thinking about this. Um when they were pushing the Brock Lesnar and big show and, and Mark Henry and all this stuff. And um, like, it, it's, it's, it's a, it's a known thing that presumably Vince McMahon loves big people. Yeah. He enjoys big, giant, muscular guys. And it, it, because he pushes them again and again and again. And you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When was the last time that really, really paid off for him? Uh, Kane. Really? You think Kane paid off for him? Yeah, I think I think so in the long run. I don't know about that. I mean, Kane, look at all Kane the... Kane got him a movie. Two movies, actually. Look at all the big, like, huge major stars that they've made in the past couple of decades. Who of them are Kane size? Hmm. But you also have to remember when... When Vince was pushing those size guys, that was also in the era where steroids was running rampant. Now we really don't have that for the most part. Yeah, I guess I guess Undertaker is the guy I'm thinking. Yeah, the Kane Undertaker kind of stuff. I, there, there's there is no new big guy they've really made. Is Col Can you say Colleen made them money? He does in India probably. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, yes. So so it does. It and does within the Riz household, he makes him a Riz. lot of Riz money. That's yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so yeah, I, I, yeah. Anyways, uh, back to the email. Number three, 
Uh, had the event occurred a week earlier, uh, would Wrestle Kingdom 8 not have been the 2013 pay-per-view of what the hell? For those of you um, who haven't watched it, yes, Eamon is not on this episode. Uh, I <laughs> highly recommend it. GT, uh, GOTO versus Shibata. Goto? Okay. Uh, was amazing. And Prince Divot <laughs> came to the ring with his uh, body spray painted like my favorite supervillain, Carnage. Um, did, okay, Mike, you seem to know about this one. Oh, I absolutely do not. Um, but, but, <laughs> you know more than I do. If, someone, if someone comes to the ring dressed as Carnage and doesn't actually eviscerate someone, it's basically like watching Spider-Man turn off the dark. So Aww. I can't really approve of this. <laughs> it's basically like reading most of the Spider-Man comics. Oh, <laughs> Carnage comics. Okay, that's fair. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm looking up this uh, show. That we got results. We got images. We got. Uh, I can find something in there. Uh, I, I'm trying. To, I'm trying to find something to figure out what. So, let's see if we got any footage or anything. Oh, this looks like the arena. That's a big one. Holy shit! Yeah, that's what she said. Oh. All right. To end up the email Ooh. here. Um, nope. That went away. There it is. Uh, may, may I wish each and every one of you may have Americans the best in this future world you are now living in. There is a chance that a dead man, f <laughs> a dead man might fight a goat. A theme park known as Dixieland might fully sink a ship, and the phenomenal athlete might have one of the most sought-after indie matches against a hero. Uh, regards, Dustin. Yeah, yeah, the interesting stuff happened with the AJ Styles, of course. Do people really still think AJ Styles is gone from TNA? Didn't he just come back? Yep. Like, which is interesting since all the stuff he's got announced for, because uh, he just got announced for the the IWC show up in Meadville. He's he's he just was in Ring of Honor. Is this? Yeah. Like, he, wait. So he, he's already back in TNA. Yeah. He has a he has a match title versus title on Thursday. Oh jeez, like from from whoever won the tournament, I take it. Magnus, yeah. Magnus, yeah. Hmm. Um, I mean, granted, I think that's actually a live episode, so or well, you know, cool. live to tape or whatever, so we don't know what happens. It really does but... kind of need to be a live episode. So I, I maybe he's just coming in to do the job. Is this a a well when Daniel Bryan left for a little bit? That kind of deal you know see that's what i think it is you, you, you think it's a daniel bryan thingy yep i think it, i thought it was the summer of punk thing it could be but that, that was my thought but but punk never did he didn't do indies he made an appearance but he didn't do indies remember no he did oh you mean oh you no, mean during the um, wrestle indies. oh no no during the WWE version of summer of punk he didn't yeah no no yeah i was talking about the original one yeah, exactly. Yeah, because the original so, one, he wrestled everywhere. If we're going to talk about AJ Styles, should we talk about the Styles Clash? Oh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, uh, we have to. My neck gets squeamish it looks, it's thinking a, it's about it. It's a little indie ish, but uh, okay. What, what, you know, it's Ring of Honor, actually, so, so fuck it. Uh, so, so what happened with the Styles Clash here, LB? I'll see oh, well, uh, near near as I can tell, um, he had a match with Roderick Strong and everything was going well. And he went to give him the Styles Clash and uh, almost broke Roderick Strong's neck. Now, um, this, uh, the only thing I really want to say about it is it wasn't AJ's fault. It was Roderick's fault because he tucked his head. AJ did everything right, and it wasn't the first time that Roderick fucked this up. He did it. Uh, he did it in a previous match with AJ Styles as well. Okay. So when Eamon brings it up, <laughs> if he decides to blame AJ Styles because he's old, tell him I said that. <laughs> it's a, this is one of those moves that... Yeah, Roger Strong doesn't exactly seem like the safest person in the world to work with. Yeah, and, and I mean, it's Ring of Honor. If you look at half the stuff that happened in the Ring of Honor, you're surprised there isn't uh, uh, any more injuries than there actually are. Uh, I'm going to try to bring up the video here. Oh, there it is. AJ Styles. And then actually Riz actually uh, posted this. Uh, so you see it, it's kind of small. So he pulls it up and whoop, boom. Pull that up again. Uh, yeah, I mean, it actually, it, it looks like Roderick tucked his head at the last second. Yep. To me. It's not that difficult to take a Silas clash, no. especially when I assume Roderick Strong has taken one before. Yeah, and, and, mm -hmm. and it's not... 
and it's not hard to fuck it up too. So, I mean, everything, yeah, everything happens so quick with those things. You never know. So, I, I don't think I blame AJ Styles on this kind of thing. No, no, no so. you can't. You can't say everything happens so quick with those things. I mean, it's an established move. It's been around for a long time. Mm-hmm. Roderick fucked it up. That's all there is to it. And it's not like it wasn't a called spot in the ring either. Like. It wasn't like the crowd was dead and AJ's just, just audible styles clash. Like, that's his yeah. finish. Yeah, he he's like the TNA himself. champion. He's obviously going to go over with that. Oh, they're saying what? Are, they're saying that this was recorded in December, this last TNA, or what? The last, the last, last. No, one? no, the last set of spoilers I remember seeing. Because you're the I spoiler mean, unless guy. I missed the set, was when AJ came back, which was what aired on. Um, uh, this past Thursday. Mm-hmm. That was the last set of spoilers I remember seeing personally. That's why when everyone was saying, oh, AJ's gone, AJ's gone, I'm like, <laughs> read the spoilers, dumbasses. <laughs> so that's it for our fan mails uh, for this week. Just one, like I said, I think you guys are uh, still kind of getting back from a vacation mode, but that's okay. You guys are we're still really active on the Facebook. But we got on the line with us right now. Really excited about this. You guys know we, we've, we've done a series before. We talked to a lot of guys doing video games. Uh, uh, on your on your iOS devices, on your Android devices, stuff like that in the past. Uh, here's another up and coming one uh, that w- that we're about to hear about. Uh, Brian Papa is on. Am I saying that? I- is there any inflection I'm missing with that? No, just Papa. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> That's yeah. a cool name. That's a cool name, uh, which is uh, you know great since we have Papa Lunchbox here with us representing our show. Hey, no relation. No relation. No That's, relation. I just no. wanted to clear that out for you guys on audio there. Um, so uh, you are um, um, uh, kickstarting. Uh, we're familiar with kickstarters on this on this program. Um, a new iOS game. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Uh, yeah, it's called Ringmaster, and it is a pro wrestling promoter simulation. So it's a game in which instead of playing as a pro wrestler, you play as the guy uh, running the promotion. Um, it's uh, it's on Kickstarter now. Uh, the backing period ends um, on Monday, January 13th, and uh, I'm only about 13 or 14 percent of the way there, so there's a long way to go. But, um, you know, hopefully uh, people think it's a cool idea and everybody kind of comes together at the end and, and uh, I get funded. Mm-hmm. Now, I, it, one thing that impressed me about this is is it felt like um, there's a lot of really cool concepts, again, on, um, you know, again, on these mobile platforms. But you, you kind of stick out as far as the art style. It, it, it feels like they, they're they're great on concepts. We we've had like you know uh, wrestling manager simulators. We've had um, um, another you know kind of build your own wrestling thing. I think with Wrestling Revolution, um, but you you definitely have a really cool, different, clean style in comparison to a lot of them. It seems. Yeah, um, I think what what happened last year was when this kind of started. Well, obviously it started last year because this year just started, but, um, yeah, last year, um, we was having conversations about, uh, what it would take to make something like this. And initially I wasn't too hyped about the idea because I figured, you know, I'd probably have to hire an artist somewhere and, you know, maybe it would be like somebody with like some like comic book experience and they draw like these like realistic looking muscular guys. And, um, you know, like I'd have to maybe try to like clone, the real wrestlers that are out there in the real world, like a lot of other games do. Cause you know, I'm not going to be able to afford like the WWE license, you know, which is probably not even available. So, um, I thought it was really important to, um, have like a really unique kind of art style, um, that looked uh, great on an, on an iPhone. And, um, it turns out that, um, a guy that I've known through the internet for years, a man named Jeff Munn, he's a, he's an illustrator. And um, he has a really cool webcomic called Kiosk. And I've known him for about 16 years through the Internet because we used to do eFeds together uh, way back in the day. And, uh, you know, we've kind of kept up since then, social media and stuff. And, um, yeah, he was doing a wrestling storyline last year in his comic. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, Jeff is the perfect guy to be working on with this. So, um, you know, once that all came together, I was like, okay, let's, let's give this a shot. 
Awesome, awesome. So, so, so you talked about you know again. There's, there's other guys doing uh, kind of. It definitely looks different. Uh, what are you hoping to bring gameplay wise uh, to to really have this stick out uh, uh, for iOS? Um, so, uh, as far as gameplay goes, I'm really influenced um, not not so much by any particular wrestling games that are out there, but more um, Nintendo's sort of strategy and sim offerings like, um, fire emblem and, and advanced wars and, uh, and, uh, sim city too, is a little bit of, of an inspiration to their, their super Nintendo version from back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, and the way that they're sort of laying the groundwork is, you know, those games are, um, really, uh, simple, but uh, at the same time, they have a lot of depth because they have a really, um, well-defined kind of system to them. So um, I'm kind of bringing elements from those games into this promoter sim world. And, um, you know, I, I want it to be something where it's really easy to, uh, to kind of put everything together. So instead of like digging through a whole bunch of menus um, that are text-based or something like that, it just it takes a bunch of gestures like dragging wrestlers um, onto the screen to put him in a match and then you drag a second person down to put him in the match. And if you want to make it a three way dance, you drag down a third guy. Um, so it's, it's got a really, um, kind of easy and intuitive interface. And then just switching matches is just like a tap on the screen. You get a nice little animation when you switch between gimmick types and, um, yeah, it's just a bunch of like taps and drags, um, which I think is, is makes it a little bit more fun. And also, um, something that you can kind of use in any situation. Like it can be something where you're holding your phone in two hands, or if you're like riding the subway or something like that, you can just be kind of doing it with your thumb. So, um, you know, I wanted it to be something that works sort of in any situation where you might be using your phone. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. That definitely, it needs to have that, definitely have that pick up and play. Cause that's always been my issues, uh, with, uh, you know, some of the other ones was it felt like I needed to sit down for a while with it, you know? Um, and yeah. I really like that. We're showing some video here while you're talking. Of course, uh, I noticed it, it, it seems smooth. You, you seem to be using the click and drip of not the tap and drag a bit more. It feels like it belongs, uh, on, you know, say an iOS device. And you are just, uh, targeting iOS to begin with, correct? Um, yeah, it's, um, initially just going to be iOS. I mean, I'm a, I'm an experienced iOS developer, so I know, you know, um, how to, uh, look at an app and be like, okay, this is how long it's going to take. And I can come up with a pretty accurate estimate of, of that. And, um, you know, it's something I can actually deliver on. So, you know, I, I'm able to budget a certain amount of time and of course then budget a certain amount of money. So really, um, just going iOS only for the initial, um, scope of the project is, is what I'm going for. And then, you know, if it gets funded successfully and then it's released to the app store and is, is, uh, does well, then, you know, I'll certainly port to, uh, other platforms. Mm-hmm. Uh, looks like you've got some interesting, uh, uh, content on here in support of this. I see, uh, scr- uh scrap iron, iron, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Scrap Iron uh, Adam Pierce uh, uh, for one is uh, you have linked on here. Yeah, um, I've been trying to, you know, come up with sort of strategic partnerships, I guess, to help get the word out, and also just kind of make the game cooler, maybe to certain uh, fans that are fans of certain kind of media. So, uh, yeah, Adam Pierce announced today uh, that that he's going to be joining the game. Nice. Uh, so you'll be able to book him in, in matches. You know, maybe you think he deserves a, a shot. Uh, you can you can push him if you want. Um, then uh, I made another uh, announcement um, last week. Uh, there's an author named Paul O'Brien who writes a really cool uh, crime novel series set in the 70s territory era called uh, Blood Red Turns Dollar Green. And um, the series is endorsed by like Mick Foley and Paul Heyman and some other some other uh, nice. folks, William Regal. Uh, there, there he is. Um, and it's actually uh, being developed as a television series right now. So uh, one of the characters from the book is going to be in the game, and uh, Paul is going to be writing a foreword to the uh, iBook that that uh, I'm going to put out for Ringmaster. Awesome, awesome. So um, you know, at, at this point, uh, it looks like you're getting some great response, uh, definitely from the industry uh, for this. Um, and granted, it's it's pretty pretty pretty. Uh, 
big uh, 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 goal here for the last three days here. Um, if, if Kickstarter doesn't make it, is that the end of this for this project? Do you have plans to go on otherwise? Um, it's going to be the end of it for a little <laughs> while at least. Yeah. Um, I mean, my thought is if I couldn't make it on Kickstarter, can I really make it anywhere? Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can always like be like, well, maybe it would have done well if I had done this or if I had done that. But I feel like, you know, it, if it was going to happen, it, it should have just happened. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it could be like a side project maybe, or maybe not, I guess. Um, it's something where I'm, I'm it, the chances of it actually continuing if the Kickstarter doesn't work out are very slim. Um, there still is a chance, but um, it's something that like, I probably don't even really want to think about right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? I kind of just, if it doesn't work out, I'm just going to kind of walk away for a little bit and then, maybe revisit it later mm -hmm. uh, it, it but even that's a maybe yeah yeah it, i mean it definitely it looks like a fun project it, it, even if if that doesn't get kicked off i'd love to see something happening with this art and everything the, the concept I, I think is very very solid um so uh if anybody's out there i uh, want to help this out uh please do you know maybe maybe somebody will help you out afterwards um that's great um oh, real quick anybody on the horn here you have any questions for our guests I've got a couple, yeah. Um, well, I, I also wanted to say that um, you've uh, I, I've I've seen information about this game in multiple places uh, before I even found out that you were booked on our show. Um, I saw you were linked on Kotaku, and you also did an interview with um, uh, uh, oh god, what's his name over at Figure Four. Oh yeah, I was on uh, Brian Alvarez's uh, show today. Alvarez, that's. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. So you're definitely generating a, a lot of positive buzz. Uh, what I'm curious about is um, I want to know about uh, about you. I mean, you were talking about your influences uh, developing a game like this. Um, how long have you been a wrestling fan? Um, whoops. Uh, for about 25 years, um, I remember the first night I watched was um, the first Royal Rumble. Uh, you know, I was a kid. My dad was kind of flipping through the channels that was on free TV. And, uh, you know, I kind of got hooked from that. So I've been, I've been a, uh, a gamer just about as long too. Excellent. Uh, what are you playing right now? Um, hmm, I was, uh, doing GTA five. I finished up that. And then I had, um, the new Arkham sitting around for a while. So I finally fired that up the other night and, uh, I'm not really feeling it. To be honest, uh, it's not as uh, it seemed a little, a little repetitive, and um, all the like all the brawls I was getting into, they were really hard for some reason. I was just like beating up some street thugs, and it, I was fighting them for like ten minutes. <laughs> like what? <laughs> <laughs> that's the new one. That's the, from the new studio. That's not uh, Rocksteady, right? Yeah. Right. I think right. So. Mm, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then also uh, on my phone, um, I've been playing San Andreas. That just came out a few weeks ago. Uh, <laughs> but I'm super excited for um, Final Fantasy VI showing up on, I think it's on Android and iOS. Um, mm -hmm. I know they announced it as winter, and I haven't played that game in probably like 15 years. And it's one of my favorite games of all time. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that getting re-released so I can revisit that world. Excellent. Um, let's see. If you had to pick your, uh, I don't know, favorite three wrestlers right now, who would they be? Um, well, right now, I mean, I, I'd say, actually, I'll just, I'll give a different answer for the first one, because I'll just say all time, um, and he's still around, and it's not a popular choice. It's Triple H. I've uh, just always been a big fan of Hunter um just his heel characters over the years i think they're always they've always been awesome um and then uh, you know i mean but he's not really a wrestler so much anymore um the other two guys uh i'd say yeah daniel bryan is um you know he was somebody that when he was in ring of honor uh i you know i was like this guy can totally you know get up to the next level and be a big star Mm -hmm. on tv uh i never doubted that for a second just just the way that he works like i was like you know this guy he just kind of leaves it all out there and he 
you know, kind of, um, he's the kind of guy that, you know, when he comes out from behind the curtain, you know, he goes out, he does his thing and then he goes back and it's all, it's all show. Like, I feel like he, it's something where like, you know, you watch it and just like the way he hits the ropes and everything, you know, it's just all these little things. Uh, I always felt like he was going to be a big deal someday. Uh, and then, um, I guess out of the, out of the rest, um, you know, I, I like, um, right now I like what Orton's doing as a heel. I think he's, he's doing a good job. He's, he's getting it done as the top heel. Um, I am excited for Batista to come back. I think that should be pretty cool. Um, and then, you know, the Rhodes brothers, um, I was at the MSG house show, uh, what was that two weeks ago? Um, when Cody did the moonsault off the cage that kind of made the rounds, on the internet. Um, they're just like a really fun, uh, t- tag team. Um, you know, a lot of people are like, Oh, they should break up for WrestleMania. Uh, and I think that's from what I've heard, that's not going to happen anymore, but, um, I'm glad about that. I feel like they should just stay as a team. Like why, why end a good thing, especially when they break up every other team anyway. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, and of course, Jake, Excellent. the snake Roberts. I mean, you know, that's... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I, mean, I, I, I don't even know how many times I've watched that clip again in the last 24 hours, but it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, last night when we were watching it, I was uh, facing the computer and I just heard the first chord of his song of his theme song. I'm like, oh, holy shit, it's Jake, the snake Roberts, <laughs> because he was the first guy that got me hooked to wrestling. So it was little a little mark out moment um what, yeah. what will be your fit fa- will be your favorite wrestling video game oh um uh, the sim the sim games i'm not i was never too fond of like i kind of feel like i'm sort of making my own mark here with the way i'm doing it um so uh, other than that it would probably be no mercy um or or maybe wrestlemania 2000 just because no mercy was so slow in four player mode um but yeah, that that it would be one of those two. Awesome. Okay. I'm actually gonna have to move because my battery is running very low. That's okay. <laughs> That's all right. We'll let you go before you die here. Uh, 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 but thanks uh, again. Uh, you can find it Kickstarter on Rick. Uh, one uh, final question. Oh, sword, one final question. Can't let go without doing the final I'm sorry. question. The big well, question. Your battery's dying. All right, real quick with the final question. <laughs> okay, I'm plugged quick in. Quick as possible. It's the final question. The big WMS question. You're in the hot seat. Are you ready for this, sir? Oh, yes. If you were any kind of vegetable, what kind of vegetable would you be? Uh, I would be a sweet potato. No question. Sweet potato. Yeah. No quite certainty right out of the gates. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. I, I've always known the answer to that one. <laughs> in his heart and his soul. He always knew the answer to that one. <laughs> All right. Can I do it now? Am I allowed to exit now? Go, you, yeah, Are you sure? Right ahead, Are you sir. sure? I'm frozen. I don't remember how interviews work. I'm sorry. It's so cold down here. Um, sorry. <laughs> and, of course, uh, if you go to kickstarter.com, search Ringmaster. It comes right up, right? Uh, a- anywhere else uh, people can check out uh, your work otherwise? Um, well, yeah. I mean, if people have questions about the project, uh, just send me a Kickstarter message. There's a great messaging platform there. And then um, also on Twitter, I'm at B Papa, B P A P A. And uh, yeah, you know, I'm always tweeting about all sorts of different stuff. So awesome. uh, it's a good way to, to reach out to me there. So Mayhemers, get out in force, help them out. Uh, I just put uh, 10 bucks in, uh, in the kitty here uh, during the show. So uh, I got to <laughs> yeah. What? You go, Sorg. That's awesome. I'm sorry with my old timey (laughs) references. Um, So thanks a lot, Brian. And with that, uh, we got a little bit of news here. Uh, So, hey, uh, this is the point where we would typically, guys, uh, go to the Indie Minute. But I guess we can. We we, we mentioned it on the last episode. So I just want to kind of give a plug uh, before that, uh, before we go to our break and and come back with our usual stuff. Um, So uh, starting tonight here after the show, God willing and my equipment willing, the way things have been going, you know, as everybody's in one hangout tonight, so we're 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 kind of uh, dealing with that. Um, we were going to be starting the indie the indie mayhem show. Uh, Amen is uh, is not here because he is uh, wildly preparing uh, for this show to kick off uh, tonight uh, around about 11 p.m. Eastern time, 10 p.m. Uh, Paradox time for him. Uh, tonight we're going to have uh, Joe Dombrowski, friend of the show and uh, uh, announcer again with Ring of Honor, International Wrestling Cartel, a whole bunch of other places. 
uh, Montreal Theory, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so if you're in the chat room here live, uh, uh, definitely uh, drop us a good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com subject indie if you want to drop us a uh, question or two for Mr. Dombrowski. Uh, I will be asking him about Timbits and KFC. Uh, Timbits? Ah, Timbits! I know, right? I know! Uh, so that's a thing. Uh, and uh, so go check that out. Everything's going to be at wrestlingmayhemshow.com, of course, and we're going to be getting those feeds up. As soon as we have a show to put on the feed, of course, uh, on all the usual places. So look for it on iTunes. It'll be on Stitcher eventually. Well, we're going to submit the submit Stitcher. I presume they'll accept that they've accepted everything else I've thrown their way. Um, hey, something else I'm doing. Um, this is the show maintenance portion of the show, I guess. Uh, something else we're doing is uh, I started a Wrestling Mayhem show super feed. So if you're somebody who's been wanting perhaps to check out the wrap-ups uh after shows and the new podcast and anything else maybe i'll you know when i finally get it edited we'll put that no holds barred thing in that feed too um go go look for that it is uh we'll put a link up uh it's over at talkshoe.com right now is where we started it this episode should be in it as well uh and that also is going to be pushed out the itunes and uh stitcher and everywhere else we can put audio uh in the near future so keep an eye out for that uh, so you can just get every episode audio you want to. And I actually recommend the best way to do it is like it, when we get on Stitcher is to get the Stitcher app. And I'll just let you know anytime there's a new episode. That's how I, I watch on Nerdist. I listen to Nerdist and all that kind of stuff. And we just lost Mike. So it's a perfect time to go to break. So with oh, that, shit. You know, uh, there was a new DVD that was out. Uh, I had a, a, a part in uh, filming and doing the uh, putting there putting together uh refereeing 101 with the great jimmy corderas former referee with wwe wwf hell he started in canada with like jack tunney legit um it was a really great experience and uh we're gonna toss you uh, a little bit of an extended trailer here for refereeing 101 uh by the great jesse the mark thanks for that jtm uh and we'll be right back with remember one i shouldn't even put this on camera but i'm going to say it anyways If you're a promoter or a, or a talent in the ring and you do not understand or underappreciate the value of a referee, then you're not going to succeed going forward. Anybody can do it. It's so simple. You just walk in the ring, you stand around, you yell and scream and say, you count one, two, three at the end of a match. It's so much more than that. There's so much detail involved in, become, in being a very good a uh, professional wrestling referee. The main purpose of a referee in a wrestling match is to help enhance the match and help enhance the story that the talent in the ring is trying to tell without being a distraction. Referees do not get enough credit for, for, for what they do. Chief J. Strongbow says, you got your stuff with you? I said, yeah. He says, well, put it on your reffing tonight. Well, what do I do? Two guys are battling on the outside, right? You start your 10 count. When you get to four, one of them rolls back in. What's the count on the guy on the outside? Five. Yes. I see some guys start over once this guy rolls back in. Why? Now, from a logic standpoint, if I'm coming in here and I want to back this guy up, don't I know that this guy's standing right there? Counting over here. What are you counting, his butt cheeks? He doesn't go to the referee because they're taking advantage of you while you're doing your job correctly. Ignore the referee, I don't care. Count the seven, count the 10, count the 15. We're gonna get our double team thing, we're gonna get our double hip toss, our double elbow, double drop kick. Everybody's going to go to the top, one's going to drop a leg, one's going to splash, we're going to do this, and then I'm going to get out. Again, you're sitting there like the... I hated that spot, I never liked it, I've done it. It's not, I'm not saying I've never done it. I have done that spot, I just dislike it immensely. If you ended the match, you'd probably get a pat on the back from the office. Boys would be real pissed at you. A small facial expression will do a lot more than this over-exaggerated, oh my God, kind of thing. Referee bumps 
in my opinion, should not look like you have been trained to take bumps. Rock looked right at Earl and said, in the middle of the ring. This is the finish. <laughs> and he counted three. Vince's big pet peeve is, do you remember Eddie Guerrero beating Brock Lesnar at, at the pay-per-view when he hit him with the frog splash after Brian took a bump and he got, it always drove Vince nuts that The 20 plus years I spent there doing what I loved doesn't get much better than that. If somebody says to you, yeah, but you're just a referee, say, damn right I am. And happy to be. Go go check out uh, that Jimmy Corderas uh, DVD refereeing 101. A great time with uh, with that uh, over at SorgatronMedia.com. Also, Joe Slash hyphen Dombrowski.com has got links over there as well. DVD uh, digital download. Uh, so now it's time for that segment we all love. One we didn't spin off to a different podcast. Remember when? Remember when? I'm going to write and record a song that we can just play in during this part. I hope you remember. <laughs> what the hell is happening? It's not going to sound like that. Holy fuck. Oh, wow. Yeah, well, Wheels is going to do backup That's just screaming. For you. Wow. So there was a great moment last night. We all shared a moment last night, guys. We all shared a moment. Jake the Snake Roberts came back uh, on uh, Old School Raw, which I think was one of the best Old School Raws they've done for a bit. Somebody is doing something weird with their microphone, by the way. Uh, so Not let's it. look back. What is your favorite Jake the Snake Roberts moment? Most memorable Jake the Snake Roberts moment. Um, the hell? Uh, Mike, are Someone's you... fighting demons. Mike? Mike, quit staring at the ceiling. Mike? Oh, I think he was stuck. Maybe he was stuck. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Hangouts being weird tonight. Um, this is show number one, guys. It show is practically one. show number one. We don't remember how to do this shit. Um, but of course, Jake the Snake Roberts. What is your favorite Jake the Snake Roberts moment? Now, me, I always go debt back to. I don't know if it's a favorite, but it was definitely the time that Jake creeped me out the most. And I hope I'm not taking anybody's here. But the time that he locked the Ultimate Warrior in a snake room. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> they put a lot into that. Wasn't he like trying to like the Ultimate Warrior was? He was trying to make the Ultimate Warrior dark enough to fight the Undertaker. Was that the deal? Yes. Like yes, it was. It was the. Oh, I don't thing. even remember that. It was. Um, I can't even remember like what the context was. I don't know if it even ended up at a pay per view or anything like that. But it did roll into like Jake and Undertaker kind of teaming up um, in the kind of the most awkward turns I think I had ever seen. Um, yeah. I agree. Now, now, okay, now, 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 Wheel, since I stole yours, like, like, <laughs> what do you remember about that? I remember. I stole like, yours, it was crazy. so like come you up with a new creepy. one immediately. <laughs> Sorry, Wheel. <laughs> it's okay. It was creepy because it was like you had him burying the ultimate warrior in graves and stuff like that and leading into just different things until you culminated into this, like, I swear it looked like a sauna room. It was uh -oh. <laughs> with dirt, <laughs> with dirt on the floor. With, yeah, with dirt on the floor, and he walks in and just tells him, "Embrace it, embrace it," and just locks the door. And you see snakes everywhere, and all of a sudden, you just see the Paul Bearer and Taker standing behind Jake, I laughing. I remember him like yelling at him, and 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 then nothing made sense in my life after that. Um, that scene of uh, here's a picture for you guys on video of of him looking through the window with the Ultimate Warrior. Um, this is this is this is definitely the most like this is the closest WW. I'm sorry, I didn't get the thing over there. There you go. Uh, th th this is the closest WWE ever got to like uh the really bad WCW like you know Mick Foley kidnapped 
Hulk Hogan and 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 Kevin the Sullivan, yeah, the Dungeon yeah. of Doom stuff. This is the closest they got to that, and I gotta say they did okay by it, right? That looks pretty awesome. I've never seen that clip. You've before. never seen that clip before? No, I've never seen that clip before. I gotta look it up after this. Show. Anyway, I, I actually got oh. it right here. Um, so I will. It says part two. So I don't know. I, I don't know if this is entirely the right one. Uh, about three minutes. Okay, all right. Um. No, it, it is a it's a classic moment, and I can't remember it really leading to anything uh, substantial or anything like that. Uh, but that was pretty much the height of it. This was like this was before. I think the next thing after this was probably when he was uh, fighting. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't want to take anybody else's. Yeah, Mike, Mike, what's Mike. Mike, what's <laughs> yours? Mike, what's yours? All right, if you're a fan of the Wrestling Mayhem show, you know what my Jake the Snake Roberts moment is. Yes. Because it, was the, it was the first thing I ever saw in pro wrestling. <laughs> Jake Roberts attacked the Macho Man, tied him up in the ropes, and had a cobra bite the shit out of his arm. Jake Roberts is responsible for me being here right fucking now. Indirectly. He's your father? Yes. He is my goddamn father, probably. I don't know. That's weird. <laughs> my mom, my mom went slumming in Stone Mountain, Georgia. I guess. Wow. But wow. <laughs> but Jake Roberts is responsible for me being a wrestling fan. Jake Roberts is is responsible for me being a wrestling fan just because he had a fucking snake snake bite the arm of the Macho Man. It was amazing. Awesome. LB, what is yours? <laughs> Well, here's the thing about Jake Roberts. Uh, everybody seems to have the same memories. <laughs> <laughs> I remember sorry, him uh, attacking the Macho Man. I remember him dealing with the Ultimate Warrior. I remember him, of course, uh, losing to Stone Cold Steve Austin and making Stone Cold Steve Austin who he was. But uh, in a more overarching sense, when I was young, and watching wrestling, uh, you know, for for the the first time, Jake Jake was the first. Um, I guess you could consider him a bad guy that I really liked. the The way that he delivered his promos was so different from everybody else. He was slow and methodical and creepy, like you said, very creepy. Um, and he uh, he was brutal. He was like very brutal and very violent with his opponents in a way that I just I love. So um, that's what I remember about Jake the Snake Roberts was he was the first heel that I was a big fan of. I love that he never yelled. No. Yeah, he like, yelled. I, I still, to this day, I don't think I could ever picture Jake Roberts yelling. Mm-hmm. I, I remember seeing him get worked up, but it's not really a yell when it happens. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah. So uh, Bobby had one from the no. – what? Bobby, no. Bobby, no? Oh, I see. I see. Bobby had one ah. from the chat room. Uh, Undertaker and Jake what? with the snake in the casket that made Warrior vomit. Scared my <laughs> ch- scarred my childhood. And Alex says, uh, he's like, uh, he doesn't know uh, Jake Jake Roberts moments unless the $5 <laughs> wrestling's Jimmy Roberts counts. Uh, so, yeah, no Jake Roberts knows, but my favorite is Jimmy Roberts moment and him DDT- DDTing 100 fans at an eye pay per view. Okay, that kind of counts for something, I guess. Why not? Yeah, yeah sure. Yes, it, it does. Jake Absolutely. Memory. Yeah. Yeah. All right. With that, let's know your Jake Roberts memory, of course, uh, over at the Facebook group or uh, uh, for Wrestle Mayhem Show or uh, on Twitter at Mayhem Show. Uh, hashtag it. Remember when? Uh, and let's know. Or in comments if you're catching this in the clip here uh, on YouTube. Uh, so with that, hey, LB. Don't we have some yes, t-shirts? Sir. What? Don't we have some t-shirts? We do have some t-shirts. Mm. Can you believe it? Tell me about those t-shirts. They're amazing. Yes. They're goddamn amazing motherfucking t-shirts. They're beautiful. They say property of the wrestling mayhem show. They're absolutely fantastic. You can get them. You can get them. It, 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 you, the listener. I'm talking to you. I'm not talking to Sorg. I'm talking to the listener. Sorg knows all this shit already. But listener... You're new, and you're going to be educated right now. You can get 
a wrestling mayhem show t-shirt that's right the thing that you've always wanted more than anything else in your entire life secretly i know your little secret heart and i know you want a wrestling mayhem show t-shirt but how I hear you clamoring. How? You're shaking your iPod. How? You're tearing out your earbuds. We'll put them back in <laughs> because you have to listen to me explain this. Uh, point your browser, whether it be Firefox or Chrome or Opera or the third one or that crappy one. <laughs> point them to ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS and you can just shop to your little heart's desire because not only do we have <laughs> Wrestling Mayhem Show t-shirts uh, – they also have T-shirts of all sorts of fancy pants wrestlers. If you like a wrestler and they're not in the WWE, um, they probably have a short for, shirt for them. And you know what? Even if they are in the WWE, they might have a shirt anyway. You can get the uh, beautiful Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com logo, property of WMS Mayhem, and of course the classic WMS Wrestling Mayhem Show logo. Each shirt, nineteen. 99 that's a bargain at twice the price that's a lie twice the price forty dollars for a t-shirt is too much but twenty dollars is right in the sweet spot while you're there do a little shopping around a little bit of shopping around do you like chris hero i sure do you can get a chris hero chris hero shirt over at prowrestlingtees.com chuck taylor friend of the show diamond dallas page friend of the show sort of because i do his yoga colt cabana Joey Ryan, Angelina Love. These are just a few of the wrestlers you can get. Just head on over to ProWrestlingTees.com. Tell them DJ Lunchbox sent you. They won't give you anything free, but it will confuse them. Thank you, LB. I I have the property of Mayhem shirt. It's damn comfortable. It is comfy. It it is a good quality shirt. And and in these these times of a polar vortex, don't you want a shirt that just holds you? And keeps you warm. Yes. That's what we provide for you at the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Doesn't Polar Vortex Comfort. sound like it should be an iPay-Per-View name? It's a, it's it's the returning Chikara pay-per-view. It could be. It very Chikara well could be. presents Polar Vortex. It's going to start Tursus. You know, it's going to be fantastic. Hmm. Interesting. Tursus is going to come in like a Tauntaun. Then, um, <laughs> then the colony are going to slice them up. I and, thought they uh, smelled the bad on the finger. outside. Exactly. Is everybody exactly. sick of Tauntaun jokes yet? Because seriously. Seriously. Yeah. Sorg, Sorg, the entire East Coast is fucking hot. We can make all Tauntaun jokes. That, that is true. That is true. It's too bad Eamon isn't here so we can yell at him for being East in a warmer coast my state. ass. The Midwest is a nightmare. <laughs> no, Eamon can't be here right now because he doesn't even know what hot is. Negative 16 in Chicago. Yeah. It's funny. As soon as we said, it's too bad Eamon isn't here, he just hey! started. Hey! And with the lag, he's definitely going to catch that. That's the first time we mentioned him all half. That's pretty re- great. This is the reason we are doing an Indie Cross podcast, he says. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, speaking of which, let's get through some of these uh, conversations so we can get to said Indie Podcast. <clears throat> Excuse me, podcast. Um, yeah, eight minutes. What's that? We have eight, eight minutes. minutes. We have eight minutes to talk about the rest of the wrestling. All right, I'm Here taking we... control of this motherfucker right oh, now. Okay. Round table. You ready for this, everybody? Yes, hit us with yes. it. Yes. Let's talk about Raw. Tell us what happened on Raw. Sorg, what was your best part of Raw last night? Jake Roberts, we already talked about that. Bam! Fantastic. Bad Mike, best part of Raw. Also Jake Roberts, but Runjan Singh doing his dance. Bam! That, that was gross. I'm sad he's back. Hot Wheels, go. Jake Roberts, of course, and... Also, laughing at Ambrose with a grin on his face with a snake licking him. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I felt yeah. like the snake was tickling him. <laughs> it could have been. It, it kind of feels weird, right? Wouldn't it? I'm sure it does, right. having no, a snake lick tickly. your forehead. It, if my big giant meat slab of a tongue can tickle people, a little tiny snake tongue is going to tickle, yeah. Okay. All right, moving on. With that note. <laughs> LB, Up LB. next, Ethan Carter III is Mike LB. and Riz's be- new best friend. That is true. They have been interacting with him on the Wrestling Mayhem Show account. Mike, tell us about it. Yeah, what's going on here? How did this start? We haven't talked about this on the show yet. Ethan Carter is fantastic. He, he just is. He, he, he's the only TNA wrestler that I've seen online who actually seems to like interact with fans. Because he's he's always on Twitter when Impact is on, which is great because Impact is never live, so you can rely on him to tweet. <laughs> um, he tweets during the show, and 
questions when things that he's seeing on TV doesn't make sense, which is <laughs> fantastic to me. There was there was one point um, in one of the impacts over the past couple of weeks where Ethan Carter was calling Dixie. Yet for some reason, the camera could hear Dixie's side of the phone conversation. Ethan Carter immediately tweeted, what is going on? Is the NSA tapping into my phone and broadcasting it live on Spike TV? Mm-hmm. It was brilliant. It was absolutely fucking brilliant. And then during the whole commercial break, he was tweeting that he was hyperventilating and he was losing his shit because he thought he might get fired. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was like, it was honestly one of the funniest things I've seen on Twitter. Like, it was Biggie Langston and AJ level funny. This is what we've been talking about. That the Derek Bateman on tout was the greatest thing I've, we, we've seen. This guy gets social media. He gets how to use this stuff, uh, and he's hilarious and, and as fantastic. And I'm glad he's finding a spot. I'm I'm I'm, I'm yes. really kind of looking forward to this now with him. Uh, I'm actually trying to get between him. He probably has the most. Most what? I was going to say, he probably has the most security in that company right now. Maybe. Maybe. His, his character, like, unless Dixie Carter goes away, that character is not going away. That's true, too. I mean, it would be awkward if that that was the case, if they actually did sell a company or anything like that. Um, so is this is Riz the one that's been talking fantasy football with him? Yes. Okay. Riz was the one that was talking fantasy football with him. I he just responded to me tweeting at him while I was watching Impact. Okay, okay, that that's great. I I love that he is engaging with people, and we're seeing it firsthand with this. Um, and also, Eric Young, when I was at the uh, TNA pay per view in Poughkeepsie, mm-hmm. the one that will be apparently airing in February, mm-hmm. uh, he, Eric Young retweeted me because I saw him doing science in the ring. Nice, uh, a great interview with Eric Young on Art of Wrestling, by the way. Um, him and Lance Storm, I, I listened to recently. Um, and Bruno San Martino, shit. Uh, so, so, so shout outs for all those. I like listen to all of them concurrently. It was just like great. Um, <laughs> Excellent. Moving on. Up next, uh, WWE uh, announced Wednesday, or they announced earlier they in the week that Wednesday they're going to have a huge announcement future. in Las Vegas. It was a mystery. What's it going to be? Well, they leaked it. They sent out an email that said WWE Network announcement. What do we think of that? Sorg. Face slap. I'm sad. Yeah. What? What? Sad that it's leaked, or sad that that's what the announcement is? No, I'm sad that my WWE Classics on Demand is going away. <laughs> There's that. There's that. I think you're not the only one. I think it, I've heard other people are upset with that too. But, it's fantastic. It's really it a fantastic. What service. if it's replaced with something better? How much? Maybe. How much do you pay for Classics on Demand? Seven bucks. Seven bucks. Yeah, it's actually a pretty good deal. If all things you, concerned because they give you at least three or four pay-per-views a month yeah and they give you uh two episodes of raw two episodes of nitro um tons of just random stuff that they throw in like sometimes you'll see um old dvd sets right now i think they have the nwo one up they have six different rumble matches that i can just watch <laughs> Like, I watched the 92 Rumble this past Saturday just for the fuck of it. That's amazing. That's good stuff. Ah, Good stuff. Uh, Excellent. Up next, Dolph Ziggler suffered a concussion after his match with Ryback. He's currently um, uh, not clear to compete and won't be for some time. uh, Uh, Do we blame Dolph for getting multiple concussions, or do we blame uh, Ryback for being too rough? Sorg, go. Can we really blame a person for getting concussions? No. Um, and, Excellent and, and point, Matt Mike. What and, do you whoa, think? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Can, and can you really blame <laughs> Ryback when you see how the guy bumps? I can blame Ryback. I no, no, no. I, I mean, Ziggler does a tremendous job. He looks like he's died every time that he gets hit. Uh, but I think there might be. I think that might have something. I don't know. How did he get the concussion? Is the other question. I don't. Clo- I don't know. A meat hook clothesline. It was a meat hook clothesline. Yeah. So yeah. was it how he got hit, or was it the way Ziggler? So, okay, I just, like, fucked up my own question because I said, how do you give yourself I a concussion? I assume it's how, yeah. it's how Ryback hit him. It could be. It could be. But, you know, you know Ziggler is pretty overzealous with those, those cells, though. You know, he could have tried to spin himself and land him wrong, you know, on his That's fucking fair. head. Uh, who knows, you know. Uh, sorry, Mike. No, that, that, 
Oh, that's I, you got? I think it's Ryback's fault. <laughs> I think it's Ryback's fault. Uh, what about you, Wheels? Honestly, maybe it's just a 50-50. Maybe just one person hit too hard, the other went a little too crazy with their spin. Uh, well, I, I think a great man, I believe uh, Jesse Ventura uh, used to say, this ain't uh, this ain't ballet. That's true. Gorilla. <laughs> will you will you stop? So, and then Gorilla would say solar plexus. Bread baskets. I learned Bread so basket. much. We've learned so it's much anatomy rib. from that guy. I don't, I think I don't it's know if really any anatomy. And not a very good trained wrestler. Um, so they released a poster for the 2014 Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. And who does it feature? Stephanie McMahon. What do we think of that? Quickly, it's 11 o'clock. She looks sexy. Yeah, I, she I, looks she good. Looks, she looks she does good. Look kinda okay. hot. Is this is this mm-hmm. the vision of the authority? Is is I mean, is this is this like the old days when we had Vince McMahon like his face on 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 some of these posters before? Um, I think it further cements that this is the future of the company. Is is or is Stephanie going to be hanging from the middle of the elimination chamber? <laughs> She can, can hang over I'm top of me all she wants. Oh my! I'm Rich Shane McMahon. Hey, oh, mother of two. <laughs> mother nope. of like four. four. She's a mother of three or four now. What? No. Yeah, yeah she's got like three kids. I think. What? I think just three. Yeah. Wow. It's three or four. I know that. The ba- She is the baby maker. I like. Oh, to make I think she plays the baby maker. Yeah. There you go. There you go. And, and she still does Time to job. play the game. Wow. And the game is, let's make another air. I want my own evolution, damn it. It's about wow. to do it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It's all about the game. Here's the bet. Wait, how many, how many kids? Like Two girls, right? Two girls and I think one boy. Really? Man. I think. I'm not how positive. How many get into wrestling? All of them. Yeah, probably. <laughs> That's just the way it goes, right? Uh, yep. Yeah. LB, what else we got? That's it. Oh, that's it. That's it, guys. Hey, thank you. Sorg, what did you learn from wrestling? What did I learn from wrestling this week? Um, I learned I so enjoy the old school Raws. I, 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 much like we like to throw back and think about back in the day, I, I, I like the WWE does too. Um, I, I love the throwback style. I love the throwback graphics. I love the throwback people. Um, it's it, it, it's a blast, and I, I had a lot of fun watching last night's show. Excellent, Mad Mike. What do you think? Um, I learned that over the past couple weeks, TNA has been really good, and people need to give it a shot because we haven't been able to do the hangouts just due to reasons. Mm-hmm. But it's actually been a very solid show for the past couple weeks, and I think people should give it a chance. Awesome. And, of course, the after shows will return this week, I believe. So if you want to watch yes. out for those on the site, uh, I know we had tweeted and everything as well. So, what? Uh, wheels? wheels? I was going to say, don't forget about me. Uh, what did I learn from wrestling? I learned DDP, DDP yoga obviously works because that man walked down that ring like he was 20 again. I know. Uh, I, I, I made a mention last night on Twitter. Uh, and I've said that on the show before. It was amazing seeing him uh, about a year ago in April, uh, jogging past our booth, turning around, backstepping. Like he was just so happy he could move, you know. Versus shows that I've seen where he just looks so horrible, and you're like, any day that you, you for the longest time we weren't surprised or wouldn't have been surprised when we heard the report that he was dead, right? You're right. And it's yeah. so great, like. Like Jake was, you know, like we think about Virgil, like like one of the pitiful stories of wrestling, uh, and it's so great that he's turned around, and, and we're Sorg, all such a big fan of him. Sorg, hmm. I don't think DDP yoga is going to help Virgil though. No, no, yoga doesn't help you from being an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking oh, of Virgil, there. anyone who has WWE 2K14, download it for free tonight. And Jake Roberts too. Speaking of yes. Virgil, what's the score of the Pens game? <laughs> zero zero. LB, <laughs> what'd you learn? Zero. Oh no, it's I, uh, Peng, Pens up one zip. 
I learned that Ryback is still a fuck up. I learned that Paul Heyman is still great on the mic. And I learned that no matter what happens, WWE will take any excuse to put the New Age Outlaws back together and on television. Uh, Bobby from the chat room says that he learned uh, uh, that you can be knocked out and smile only if a snake is all up in your face. Also, that Sergeant Slaughter is melting. And Alex learned that Jeff Jarrett <laughs> is buying Tricara to sell it to WWE. Exactly. Hashtag Melter. Guys, uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show. Sorry for the off weird mayhem show hey that's that's don't apologize every mayhem show do not apologize weird i'm so cold it's so cold audio Um, gold would you say it's stone cold no so cold stone cold no no glass breaking only only ice Breaking thoughtful riot.com. You can find me at thoughtful riot. Thoughtful riot. Follow me on Twitter at DJ Lunchbox, uh, aka Leopold in Bang. There is great things happening everywhere. Sorg, where can they find you? I'm at Sorgatron. And of course, Sorgatron.com, Sorgatronmedia.com for all the fine products that we're uh, developing here at Sorgatron Media in this cold, cold, cold studio. Uh, <laughs> And if I mention it's cold. Um, and of course, Mad Mike, you're at Mad Mike 4883. Wheels is at Hot Wheels RWA. Check out uh, he's him and me at rwalive.com. We're in West Newton uh, this uh, Saturday for what's going to be a great sixth anniversary show, right, sir? It is the fifth year anniversary. And if you want to hear about that, I want to talk about that a little bit on the Indie Mayhem show. Check that out. Our first guest, Joe Dombrowski, will be joining Woo-hoo! us. And uh, and with that, huh, guys, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. 412-206-WMS0. Twitter at Mayhem Show. Find us on Facebook, Google+, YouTube, Blip TV, your Roku device via the Blip TV app, Stitcher, Spreaker, SoundCloud, more Tuesdays, 9 p.m., live.sogertronmedia.com if there's an, a technical glitch. And we'll see you next time. Mayhem, out. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. wait.